right before the war, you know, you just grabbed a day, whatever you could. And then I worked there, uh, to begin with, I was in the Air Force, and I worked out of that. And then, uh, so I came back and I worked at the Bantam, and then I got trapped, and then I went in the Navy. And then I came back, and uh, I worked at the Bantam until 54. In between, I, I was in the Navy Reserves, and I put about 16 months in Guantanamo Bay, mm -hmm. Cuba. And then, uh, and then I think in '54 they shut down. Yeah. Now, when you would deliver cars, did you deliver them to dealers, or where, where were you taking them? Dealers. Today? Yeah, Roy Evans was a big dealer. Uh -huh. Used to go to Baltimore, I think in Philadelphia, and then Atlanta was a big place. I kind of have a zoning. Well, there's uh, two drivers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Two drivers. So you drove pretty much straight through, and you'd drive for a while, and he'd drive for a while. Yeah, right. Yeah. And what what seemed to be the most popular model? Were they the convertibles or the? I don't know. Yeah. I know one thing: where you stop someplace, people would really come around and. You get a lot of attention. Yeah, yeah take a look. Yeah. Did, did a lot of people know about the Bantam car then, or not too much? Not too no. Uh -huh. So you you guys would have to stay overnight somewhere, wouldn't you? No. No. Just drive straight. And they never stay in the motel. Really? You start and you drive. And the high roads weren't as good as they were now, and the, like even to this day, I know how many miles it is to Atlanta, Georgia, or Philadelphia, or, or Baltimore. Or something like that. And, uh, you know, I remember those days. See, I spent more years in the tool room, you know, doing the tool and die work than I did the driving. Yeah. Like, like you know, say, it more or less was a part time job. You had, Tor torpedo motors and all? Yeah, th that was English design. See, the Butler were just full of uh, English people. I think they were diesel, they weren't gasoline. Okay. That was a, see, that was a tool, you asked me what you know, a tool maker did. Well, that's what they do. They, they had to make special fixtures and stuff to make that torpedo, you know, the head the for it and everything. Okay. So you liked, uh, did you like the tool room job? It was more challenging. Yeah, more challenging? Yeah. Uh -huh. See, I, whenever I first got out of the high school, I worked at AK Steel, and I just couldn't see pile sheets. See, I ended up at Hoburg's, and uh, never a dull day. And it was all just like painting a new masterpiece every day, but it was a new challenge. Was there a lot of women uh, working there, putting the trailers together? A certain amount. See, we used to make fun of Europeans because they used women in the factories. And then now, you know, the, the women, have, they have more college edu degrees than the men do. And uh, it's like in the hospital, the women run the thing. <laughs> and the, you have a woman head of uh, AT&T and the, these big corporations. Through so U.S. Steel, they have a woman head of it, yeah. They were both hard workers, and the neighbor were loyal employees. I said, you know, I mean, they like went in order to meet that jeep deadline, and the band, I mean, they'd work their butt off, and they only paid maybe, you know, fifty or seventy cents an hour. He had like whenever I first started, he got seventy cents an hour, and then right before when the navy got ninety cents an hour. You, was was Hemfling more of a boss than uh, Turner was? Or? No, Turner was a big well, higher. Turner was higher up than yeah. Hemfling was. They they worked together, you know, <coughs> painting and everything. Walter Hemfling used to live out near you. Out there. <coughs> yeah, so he was the employment guy. Okay. He worked in the office. Yeah, like I said, whenever they got that landmine. They made the headline in the paper, a million dollar order. Yeah. Uh, defense. Now what, what was that made out of, a, a casting? That, uh, yeah, it was just stamping at the top and the bottom, and then, uh, you know, they had a fuse in the center, and then the, 
like the army, you had to package them a certain way and everything. I don't know how many of them they made. See, then you asked what a tool maker does. Well, they had have gauges, you know, so that they pass inspection. So that's where your tool room came in.